Okay, moving on to the next team in the Pac-12 that we will be going over today. That will be Kyle Smith and his Washington State Cougars. And I'll start off by saying this. I think that everyone has to realize that Washington State is one of the hardest jobs in the country because you're playing in the Pac-12, and let's face facts, it's not like Washington State is an attractive school that everyone wants to go to, and it's not like Washington State, besides Clay Thompson, is this big basketball program with all this history. But last year, they decided to bring in Kyle Smith, the first-year head coach from San Francisco, and I actually watched a little bit of Washington State last year, and I do think that there are some signs of optimism, especially that I saw around the program last year, that I really haven't seen in a while. And I do think that Kyle Smith is one of these coaches where just because he's leading your squad, that is going to add two to three wins that you're going to have that, to be honest, before the season started, odds are you didn't think you were going to have. That's how good of a coach my guy Kyle Smith is. Now, unfortunately for Washington State, I do think this season could have been pretty good if C.J. Elby, a kid that got drafted in the NBA draft, would have came back to school. And I'm not ripping on him. He obviously has to make whatever decision is best for him. But kind of in a similar way to Colorado and Stanford, I think Washington State is another team with the NBA draft decision qualifier uh, that really hurt them pretty big. Tyrell Terry, uh, Tyler Bay, we mentioned it with Colorado and Stanford when we were going over their team previews and how exactly I believed those two guys leaving kind of hurt their schools and how they're going to do this season. I think CJ LB is a guy that you could put right at the top of the list. He was one of the more high usage uh, guys in college basketball last year for this Washington State Cougar team. And I do think if he would have came back to school, I don't know if Washington State would have been an NCAA tournament team per se, but I do think they would have been at least an NIT team and have some optimism once again that this WSU program hasn't had in a while. And a lot of that would have to do with the fact of that one-two punch of CJ LB and also the kid that's going to be their best player this year, Isaac Bonton, who I think is a little underrated without LB. He's going to be the go-to guy for this Cougar team, and he becomes very important to the squad. When Bonton went down with a hip injury late in last season, it put a microscope on the Cougars' offensive limitations, and Washington State lost three games in a row without Bonton in the lineup, and their offense was awful. They had a offensive performance rating of 0.72, 0.88, and 0.90 points per possession during that span. And while the individual advanced metrics paint an inefficient image of Isaac Bonton, I feel like he's the kind of guy where even though his metrics may say that, the fact that he plays for this Washington State Cougar team, if you're the Cougars, you don't care what his efficiency is, you're just going to need him because he's a guy that could create and make shots. And to be honest, if you're the Washington State Cougars, that is just flat out something you haven't had in a while consistently before LB and Bonton. And now with LB gone, they're really going to need Isaac to continue picking up the role. Without him, Washington had no one capable of breaking down the defense from the point of attack. With few other scoring and playmakers in the fold last year besides CJ LB, I feel like Kyle Smith had no choice but to stretch Bonton outside of his comfort zone. Bonton is the kind of guy that could really take his own shot, and he doesn't really need, you know, that many open shots and that much open help in order for him to create. And I feel like for Washington State, this is going to be a guy where even if he's a little inefficient, I'm just not really sure what else you could really ask from him. But if you're a Washington State Cougar fan, the big key to this team, in my opinion, is the other talent around Isaac Bonton, more specifically the young talent. And last year's freshman class, I think it's solid because Noah Williams, he was a useful swingman who carved out a niche as a defensive stopper last year. And then Tony Miller and Al Aljaz Kunk are going to be the two freshmen that are going to be into the mix this year. I think legitimately both of them are going to have a chance to play. And then they also have DJ Rodman, the son of Dennis Rodman, who also falls into that multi-positional bucket, but shot making was his ticket to Division One hoops. Rodman still in the fetal stages of his development, but I do think he can replace a chunk of the scoring and shooting shortages left behind by LB, especially now that he has a little bit more of a consistent chance to play. And then the other guy a lot of Washington State fans are pretty high on is their big man, the seven-footer Voldemir 
Mark Kovetsky and his growth early in the year really gave some Washington State fans some optimism, but the Ukrainian big man saved his best for last, which was an 11.10 rebound game against Arizona State in the second-to-last game of the season, and they also have Ryan Rapp, who's an Australian, who went down with an injury last year. He's a rising sophomore who faces a tall task in trying to nail down a spot, and to be honest, a very crowded Washington State rotation. And I totally understand the names that I just mentioned aren't really going to be the ones that stand out in terms of a legitimately good Pac-12 basketball team. But I do think Kyle Smith, once again, is the kind of coach that you just give him some talent, he'll be able to grind out wins. And I'm going to predict Washington State to come in 12th in the Pac-12 just because I look at this talent compared to some of the other teams and I just don't see it especially when you compare the top-notch talent. I like Isaac Bonton, but to be honest, I'm going to take Ethan Thompson of Oregon State, and I'm going to take Matt Bradley of Cal over him. And I feel like Kyle Smith eventually is going to have this program going in the right direction when they're firing on all cylinders with recruiting and player development and really implementing the system. And to be honest, last year, those were all things the Washington State basketball program was able to do. And I feel like this year, when you combine the combination of LB and his decision to depart and the recent Pac-12 improvement, especially in that middle tier, I do think that I'd be pretty surprised, kind of similar to Cal and Oregon State, who we just spoke about. I don't see Washington State being able to kind of get out of that gutter of the tier. But at the same time, the fact that they have a coach in Kyle Smith and not a guy in Ernie Kent who really just was leading the program absolutely nowhere. I do think that is a really good sign for this Washington State team going forward. And if Kyle Smith could just bring in talent, which he's proved to do a pretty good job of so far, especially at a tough place like Washington State, I feel like he's such a good coach where somehow, someway, they will just find out a way to grind out and win games.